benefits of empathy. Uh, empathy creates connectedness to all of nature. When I was eight years old, uh, my father uh, took me out fishing. And we lived right behind the, uh, the Saugeen River, but we used to like to go off-road on the gravel and uh, find some new place. It was an adventure. And one day he turned into a, a farmer's driveway, which was okay in those days. Nobody really minded if you came and fished on their property. But I, I noticed a really long stack of new wood that had been cut. And for some reason, this time it really hit me hard because these were young trees. It was like full bodies all chopped up instead of quarters, the way I had seen it before from large trees. And it, it hit me really hard thinking, these were young lives. These are young trees. And I felt a pain about that. Now we drove past them and we came down to a, a small road and got out of the car and got our equipment and and as we're we find a little uh, wooden bridge and we meet a we meet a German fella on the bridge and he's wearing these lederhosen these leather pants and I'm thinking oh my gosh he's wearing a cow on his body I had never seen leather on a person's body before and it kind of freaked me out I mean, I did like the suspenders all embroidered and everything, but it didn't cover up for the fact that he was wearing a pair of pants that used to be worn by a cow. So I uh, listened to the, my dad talk, and he asked him, how's the fishing? And uh, um, the guy said, oh, no, there's nothing. <laughs> there's no fish there. Don't bother. And, and said goodbye to the fellow, and my dad turned to me and said, oh, that guy is a liar. And I said, what? He's lying. He said, yes, he's lying. I said, how do you know? He said, did you see how the strap from that, from that bag was pushing down deep into his, into his coat? I said, I know I didn't see that. What does that mean? He said, well, it means there was a lot of fish in that pack, so I'm going to that river. He walked ahead uh, and then turned right around and came back to me and said, you have to stay here by the stream. There's no place for you to stand, um, and it's not safe for you. Uh, if the water's really rushing. It's going to be great for fishing, but it's not safe for you. Um, why don't you just play by the stream here? I was caught in the chest a little bit by the fact that I wasn't going to be with my dad, but the stream looked pretty interesting, so I just walked back over the bridge and and sat down and, and, and looked, and my father went away, and... Um, I didn't have any worries about being alone. And as I'm sitting there, I'm noticing um, there's a little hill on the other side of the, of the stream, and there are all these birch trees. And, in, and there's a, a, a layer of color that's shining like, like church windows. And it's purple and pink and white trilliums with the sun coming through them at the back. And I'm really caught by this beauty. It seems to come right through me, and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, color has a feeling. I never knew that. And so I was so interested. As the sun was going down, I actually had to get down on my belly to watch the, the fullness of that event until I couldn't see it anymore. And so once now I was on my belly, I had a different perspective. And I'm looking at this stream, and the stream is extremely clear. Um, there's a lot of rocks, uh, very small ones and some larger ones. And, um, and the bank, the grass comes right down to the side uh, with a little bit of rock sticking out. And I'm, I'm hearing a repeat, a repeat, a repeat of sounds. And I'm realizing, oh, my gosh, this is... The water's making a sounds in the river, and it's it's like a song because it goes over. This is a phrase that goes over and over again, and I started singing along with it, and it kind of took me away into some really beautiful place, a connection with this water and the life of this stream. 
And just as I was in my reverie about the song and singing along, my eye gets caught by this little silver thing goes woof in front of me, and I'm caught. <laughs> I, wow, what is that? I'd never seen such a small silver fish before in a stream. And then I realized it was a trout, and I thought, I wonder if it's a speckled trout or a rainbow trout. Couldn't tell. And then along comes about eight or ten smaller ones right beside it. And I think, oh, it's got friends. That's so cool. And they don't just swim by. They start meandering around and investigating stuff and playing with each other. And I feel the camaraderie. I feel the fun and the joy in the movement as they're swimming together as a group. And then one of them takes off and investigates a leaf that has gotten caught um, in the water. And um, just for a moment, uh, I lose interest in him because there's a, a change in the sound of the water. Now the fish didn't do that. There's a piece of wood that has come across and it is, it's blocking in some way and the sound of the river changes or the, the stream changes and it's kind of distressing to me. I don't feel the flow and then it comes loose and it starts floating away again. And I, oh, okay, well, so there's a reason why that, that stream sounds the way it does. Everything is in place in a certain way that the tones and the sounds and the song is sung in a certain way and that can get changed by uh, a, a piece of wood getting stuck across it. I say, oh, okay, that's really interesting. Something can in, can interrupt the song. That's true. Something can interrupt the song, even in a stream. So then, I, I my attention is back to that little that little uh, um, trout and all his friends seem to be circled around him, and he is. He's underneath this leaf and there's bubbles all forming and he's lost in there. He's like frantic, blah, going around, can't find his way out and they're all around him and I'm, and I'm sensing, come on, get out of there, come on, we're over here and he gets backed around and sees him way, his, his way clear out of the bubbles and beyond and when he gets out of that stuck place, they circle around him and they're all touching him with their noses going, are you okay? How was it in there? You must have been freaked out. Oh my God. And the, the little the little fish in the center is going around. He's turning face to face with each one in its turn. And I imagine he's answering their questions somehow. And I'm thinking, this is fabulous. I had no idea that fish talked to each other. I didn't know. They're friends. So I... <clears throat> Excuse me. When my father came back, he startled me out of that reverie. I mean, the fish had swum away just before he came, but his feet, I saw them next to me, and it just kind of came into my frame. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... I, I didn't really know how to tell him about <clears throat> what I had learned at the stream. And he is so happy. I can see a tail swinging down in front of me, and he's got a chain full of fish. And my heart drops. I mean, I'm happy for my dad because <clears throat> he's using the fishing to keep from drinking. He's a bad drinker. And so fishing has been the thing that has kept him sober. But now I've made friends with these fish in the stream, and he's got a string full of fish in his hand, and he's so happy. And I am, I don't know what to say. I, I get up and I walk with him and I go in the car and I watch him put those fish in the trunk, and, and I'm, I'm feeling so heavy in my heart. And... We're driving home and I'm thinking, I can't say anything to him about this. I learned a lot today, but I can't say anything to him about this. 
So I have to choose. I have to choose sides for my empathy that day. That I have to feel more for what my father's going through and the success that he's felt that he's had by catching this fish. And it was a turning point for my life. That I knew that we are all so connected. And but at that age, at eight, eight, age eight, I didn't know how to resolve the conflicts in that. And so it's been a pivotal point for my life. That has shaped me, has shaped my road today, my my whole ideas about empathy and, and my my usefulness for my life to bring a resolve somehow between us and nature so that we are all at one. That gave me the concept of oneness and it has been in my my life's work to make that an actual thing. Mm. That's my story. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, so what we want to do is now everyone can have up to 30 seconds just to give a comment or perhaps what did you see as the benefit of empathy within that story? And maybe I'll just start. Um, yeah, for me that's really about that quality of empathizing with nature and feeling nature and having a sense of connection with nature. Uh, so and I know that from backpacking, being in nature, and and uh, you know just being totally immersed and involved in what's going on, seeing the stars, seeing the the vistas, and and so I really I enjoyed that uh, story. Feel a little sad about the disconnect uh, between you and your father. So. Anyone yes, else? I, um, I think it's beautiful, and I think that I hope one day I can see that oneness or feel it. I think I can see it, but I can't feel it in my heart. And I think that that disconnect I can relate to more than the oneness, and I hope one day I can relate to more of the oneness in my heart. I, I think in my head I can, but... And spiritually, I can, but my body, my heart doesn't seem to connect to that oneness. And I think that's possible. And I think it's beautiful to hear how an eight-year-old girl can feel that oneness and then has to choose between. And I think that often as young children, we are asked to make those kind of choices. And they are pivotal in our future. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think they are. I think. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I think. I think those things about um, about our our natural connection with empathy. Maybe those times when when we have to when we're not allowed to be as empathetic as we naturally feel we could be. Those things actually shape uh, our our meaning for our life. I think they do. Suzanne, did, did you like to comment? Um, yes, uh, I, that was also beautiful. I'm not hearing you could have your mic off. Oh, no, I unmuted it. Let's see. Um, can, you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, we hear you. Oh, okay. Um, yes, Felicia, yes. that was... That was very beautiful. You're a very beautiful yes. person. Um, the picture I saw from your story was the picture of the circle of life. Um, it's just always <clears throat> circling. Every it, it's all connected. Um, a, a fish obviously has a lifespan. People have a lifespan. Trees have a lifespan. It's nature is the one that is the driving force of the circle of life. That, that's what I got from your story. 